talking about what is statistics, trying to motivate you to open our ears, your ears to learning this also for you as an engineer, very important topic. Even though you're not going to be a medical doctor, you think you're not going to be a scientist, fine. If you're going to be at some company out there, it will be very difficult for you as a high-level engineer having a high position, no matter whether you work with product development, quality control, whether you go into management, very difficult to do management without numbers. Um, so no matter what your dreams are in your career coming, you cannot avoid data. And you cannot avoid to have to deal with data and how to use them in your decisions and the way you develop what you do. I'm sorry, but you cannot. And it's going to be worse. It's already pretty bad, in a way, if you see it like that. And it's just going to be worse from now. It's going like this with data. And the number of people knowing about it is just going like this. Right. So if you follow this curve, you have a future. Statistics, more boringly said, is about analyzing data. It's about understanding the random nature of the information that hits us when we look at data. Because most often we cannot just take it for granted. We have to realize that it could maybe be slightly different. Maybe it's not the true story. Maybe we... there is some variability going on. We need to have some ways to, dealing, to, to deal with that, right? And I'll give you those. So it's for decision-making. I think I've said that already. Could be very down-to-earth decisions in a company. Just looking at data, how many did we sell? How many do we expect to sell next year? What about in, if you're a, a stock analyst? You would want to measure the expected price of a share. This is, uh, you can do financial engineering at our university also. You could also do it at other universities. So the whole data analysis is very important for this world also. Is one machine better than the other? Is our production in control? Is uh, what should we change our ingredient in our, in our food product here? Whatever. We need statistics, data analysis, numbers to help us make those decisions, and it's being done out there already, basically, in any discipline. That's the point here. So, I've basically said all this already. Um, I'm trying to convey to you the importance of my topic. I hope you can get the idea. I have done nothing else since uh, 83, so uh, 84 maybe. It's uh, going away back there, but uh, it's a nice thing to spend your life doing. If you just want my humble advice, uh, it's not the worst thing you can do. Anyway, a few more words before we dig into the details. You could say that what I talk about here, the kind of st statistics that we will focus on in our course, because we, also, we cannot teach you, I cannot make you up and running on social media analytics tools. That's a bit too much. You'll have to, to move on to more courses after this one. But now you know that they're out there if you want. Um, I can talk about the, some of the basic and classical statistical tools that you will meet many places. And the framework for this, what we could call the modern statistics, even though it's said twice, it's partly based on what we call looking at the data, descriptive statistics. I would say something that all of us started back in third grade. I think probably many of you have already started looking at some data in an Excel sheet uh, many years back in your math class, back in uh, elementary school. That's a part of it looking at the data sort of kind of naively sometimes and a little more structured at other times. Then combined with probability theory, and that's the thing here. We need the concept of probability to be able to make us intelligent in the way that we face the fact that the data we get is not the full story about the world, right? There is, a, there is an, an element of randomness. Of, so sometimes we get one number, sometimes we get another number. The, the, the mathematical framework to deal with this, to make us intelligent in the way we look at data, is probability theory. This is not a probability theoretic course. Anyone in here who has taken or 
are taking now probability O2405. One hand, it's a nice course where you can learn much more about probability. I will try to teach you just the minimum to get us up and running with stats, right? But if you really want more probability, which is a nice modeling tool of, in its own right, go to the other class. But nevertheless, we need a couple of uh, lectures on the probability thing. So the framework, the way we are thinking, is coming here. So this is, in a way, we can get back to this later in the course. This is kind of a framework of um, reasoning for the whole course that comes here. Then when we get into it and we do everything, we may not think too much about this nice framework, but it's nice to know that it's there. The framework is like this. Actually, the picture is better, then I can get back to the words afterwards. Here's the picture. We would like to know about the whole world, right, to put it like that. When we look at data, we'd like to know everything, the full truth about the phenomenon that I'm looking into, right? So I'd like to know the whole population, that's the word we use, population for knowing everything, in a way, for knowing about the world out there. The thing is, the population in our minds usually consists of an infinite amount of information, almost infinite at least sometimes, if we want to know the, the effect of a treatment, if it's in the medical area. Well, we are actually talking about the effect of this treatment on all people in ever, in the future, millions, every, infinitely many people getting this treatment. We like to know the real effect across all of these. That's kind of the thing we'd like to know, but that is goddamn expensive to get that number because I would never be finished with my study and my company would go broke before I get the final number, right? So what we do is the only realistic thing that we can do, we can look at a sample, that's the statistical term for this. This is used a bit differently from when you're a chemist, we use the word sample differently here. The sample is a selection, it's a subset of everything, right? So we just measure maybe the height of five persons and not the whole population on the entire globe, right? And then we hope, at least that's what we do, we hope that this subset, affordable subset that we can have the money to go to measure, we hope that that will tell us something about the entire world, right? That's actually what we do when we start looking at numbers. We would like those numbers to be sort of generalizable, to be valid for also other people, right? If I measure five people, I get a mean height of 180 centimeters. I'd like to make a conclusion, something like, hey, then I believe that the mean height of the population is 180 centimeters. That's how I want to use the five persons. I want to say something about the population mean, right? That the mean of everyone would be 180. That is what we are going to do in this course constantly. That is called, with a fine term, it's called statistical inference. That we infer something about the unknown thing out there. For statistical inference, so statistics, as we talk about it here, is about analyzing a sample. That is, when I say that, it's like looking at the numbers. That's what I mean by analyzing a sample. It's not a, it is not a chemistry term. I'm not going into the lab, I'm, I'm looking, I'm doing statistical analysis of my data. That's what I mean when I say analyzing the sample. Are you going to turn it down a little bit, Georgi? Or am I going to stand on my head or go away from my nice slide? Uh, anyway, we try to generalize. I'll stand here then. Um, for that to make sense, right, that's the last point here, for that to make sense, it's important that the sample has been collected in a meaningful way, right? That's what we talk, we talk about, that the sample should be representative. It cannot help if I'm gonna know about the mean height of the population in Denmark or in the globe, that I just sample old guys like myself because for some reason we tend to be smaller than you young guys. You, I don't know what they put in the water these days. But anyway, um, anyway, I know what happened back then. It was uh, 
mother is smoking and uh, you're drinking. That was not a problem back then. Uh, well, we see the result now, right? Uh, but anyway, we have to make samples that represent the population that we want to infer about. If we want to know about what people are voting in Denmark, we shouldn't only ask people in Hello. We should make sure to ask people all around. There are different ways to make sure that is okay, actually. In, in those classical uh, investigations for how, what we vote, usually a pretty systematic uh, approach is used to make sure that we have everyone represented. A basic principle, though, that can be more expensive, but at least the most basic one is to make sure, easy to say, more difficult to do sometimes, to make sure that the five persons I measure are selected randomly from the entire population. That's easy to say for a, theoret for a theoretical guy. But then you can push him to how to do it in practice. But we'll get back to that. That was the statistics in the big picture. Statistics will save the world. That was my first message. You can believe me or you can disagree with me. That's fine. Second one was level down. Statistics is very directly important for you in your engineering activity, both here when you're still students, but also in your future careers. It will be very difficult for you to avoid data. If you're not going to do it yourself, you're going to have some staff in your group that will do it for you. And it will be a bit embarrassing if you as a manager don't have a clue about what they are doing for you, right? So uh, I can only recommend you to, to know about it. And now, finally, uh, I was introducing statistical reasoning thinking. Like, we have some data, we call that a sample, we want to infer about the population, assuming, or when we do it in practice, trying to make sure that the way the data was collected made sense. That's the short version of it, right. So, Georgi, I think we are ready.